So I'm wanting to work on my seven step value scale. Traditionally, there um, usually is about nine steps, but I went ahead and gave you guys a little bit shorter one. Um, so seven steps. Remember, this is going to be my, what I like to call my base color, but it's my hue. It has nothing mixed into it, just pure out of the bottle um, color. It doesn't have white or black or other things mixed in with it. Um, and then showing the left side is the tints and then the right side with the shades. So um, to begin with, it's kind of up to you. You could fill in with this with your um, white and black and blue, or you can start with the color mixing. So I know being right-handed, I like to work left to right. So I'm gonna start with my tint of blue. First color being white with just a little touch of blue. So this is where I'm gonna take my white, I guess I could have put it in a section, but I like things to be kind of flat when I mix, but totally up to you. Um, and I'm going to take, now since this has white on it, if I go and mix it in the blue, then I'm stuck with having white mixed in with my blue. So keep a, pa um, a paper towel close and I'm just wiping off my palette knife here and taking a little bit of the blue, not very much at all, because remember the darker the color, the stronger it is. And I'm going to mix my blue just to get a little bit of a tone just a little bit if I feel like it's too much normally you know I would you know if we're gonna stick to adding the dark to the light if I wanted instead of mixing a whole bunch of white paint what I'm gonna do is put the white here and then take a little bit of that blue and that's the best way that you don't like waste a whole bunch of paint because now that I'm mixing this, this is more of that first value that I want. If we're thinking, you know, white to that first tone has just a touch of the base color in it. See the difference there? And you guys know this from the first project, um, acrylics are going to dry darker. So already I'm thinking, hey, that could be my next step. And I can mix a whole bunch of these, but it, I don't have to mix. I'm trying to create the illusion that when it goes from here to here in between, it's gradual and it's equal, even though we not, even though we know it's never going to be as easy as 25% of this, 50% of this. You're gonna have to visually look at it and, and watch it transition from light to a darker tone. All right. Probably gonna be my one, my two. I'm gonna take just a little bit of this. It's gonna be my two here. And you can label them if the numbers help. So it's gonna be my one, two, three, and remember four is gonna be the blue. And then I'm gonna mix the next color before the blue. So I'm gonna grab some white paint here. I already contaminated my color. Look at that. Not a big deal, It'll be all right. I want them to appear pretty equal as they jump from one color to the next. This is gonna help you get to know your colors and what to mix when you need a certain color that you're looking for. Really just kind of understand the science behind it. All right, so as I'm mixing these colors, we're gonna come back and um, I'll go ahead and show you guys how I'm applying that. So I just realized um, that the video that I made of me applying my paint, instead of the time lapse, I did the slow motion. So. What would have been maybe a minute of painting probably would have turned into five minutes. So I'm not going to include that video in this overall video, um, but I will let you know what I did. I went ahead and applied these tonal or these tints to um, this half of my value scale. I went ahead and painted the ear white because that would have originally actually been, you know, the lightest step, but I wanted you guys to use your first step, which would be, you know, with the white with a touch of your, your original hue. So to kind of recognize that I went ahead and added the ear white 
um, but you don't have to do that. Um, but here's my value, one, two, three, and then remember that middle value should be your base color. So that's gonna be my blue, which is does not have white or black added to it. So I'm dipping into the original cup because it shouldn't have any other colors in it. Now, some of the things I did to give you some guidance on painting, I get a lot of questions about um, how to get close to the edges. And you guys have experienced this with the last project, but I use the edges of my brush. So just a reminder, a really nice, well taken care of brush really helps. Um, I gave you each what's called a flat brush. So I just use the edges to get my straight lines. You could cover it up um, with some scrap paper or tape. Um, you know, if you have painter's tape and stuff like that at home, um, I just don't have enough for everybody to do that in the classroom. Plus, I want you guys to keep working on your, your uh, fine motor skills of applying paint. Don't be afraid to turn the page. Um, you know, for example, as I'm getting this edge here, felt a little awkward applying it, so I shifted it a little bit or changed the direction. So, with this being kind of a stylized image, you know, not blending, I'm just trying to show the transition, um, I felt it was okay to outline it. So like I said, if you did, that's okay too. All right, so I have the blue, and now that I have that, it's drying, it should be slowly fading from the blue to the blue with a little bit of black, a little bit more black, a little bit more, um, all the way to the end where it would be black. So um, this time, hopefully, I will do a time lapse and you can see how that is coming together. And remember, you always wanna add the darker color to the lighter because the darker colors are stronger, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so let's check out how to make a shade now. Just a reminder with working with acrylics, every time I'm changing colors, I'm cleaning out my brush in the water and then drying it. Uh, if you don't pat or blot the uh, water, you'll start getting more streaks. Um, and you can see through the paint a lot more. So don't forget, every time you change colors, it is okay to clean out your brush. You just want to make sure to dry it. Now, when I went from this um, tint number two to three, I didn't clean out my brush. I felt like as I put more paints on my brush, it would blend in just fine. But if I was going from... Uh, the blue, let's say had the blue and white on my brush, I wouldn't want to start working with the shades because then I have blue, white, and black in my brush, and that's not accurate. So remember the shades, they don't have any white, um, they just have black added to the color.